what's up everybody welcome back to exotic astrology once again and today we will make another video on how to be a yogi in a city i had made one video and many people have requested me that why don't you make part two of this video <laughs> i said yes 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 why not two why not 200 yes we will reach part 200 also sometimes so there you go another video on how to be a yogi in a city and if you have not watched the first part i have put the link of that video down in the description all right please go and check that also and yes before i begin as i always say god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him and if you're new to the channel and you have not yet subscribed then please subscribe to it and if you want a consultation then please approach me through my website the link is there in the description below and let's start the game so last time we had discussed that how to be a yogi uh, or how to be like a yogi staying in the city yes not staying in the amazon forest or not staying in the himalayas but staying inside of a city like berlin <laughs> or staying inside a city like mumbai or kolkata wherever you are yes or raul pindi maybe if you are from pakistan watching this so today we will also discuss but before that i would like to uh, quote one shloka which lord krishna says i do i remember that totally yes yogi naam api sarvesham madgate nantaratmana shraddhavan bhajate yomam same yukta tamomata which basically means that yogi naam api sarvesham madgate nantaratmana means he who always thinks of me is the best of the yogis. Should I repeat? One who always thinks of me is the best of the yogis. He doesn't say a yogi is one who is sitting in the forest with one leg like this and the other like this. <laughs> okay, that is not what actually a yogi is because yogi, Lord Krishna says, is one who is thinking of me 24 hours yes 25 by 8 why 24 by 7 it's 25 by 8 so that is uh, what actually is the definition of a yogi so this means that externally whatever we are doing if we are having that consciousness internally then we are almost a yogi <laughs> which means that externally we do not need to renounce this world yes there's this conception that Oh, to be spiritual, you have to uh, let go of this material world. You have to stay secluded. You have to stay alone. You cannot marry. Uh, that's not true, actually, because in the scriptures, we see that most of the famous personalities, they are married. The writer of the scriptures, Vyasdev, he's married. Yudhishthira Maharaj, married. Arjuna, married. Nakul, married. Sadev married. Bhim, married. Draupadi is married. <laughs> Kunti is married, Subhadra is married, Dhruva Maharaj, Bhagavatam, married, Chitraketu Maharaj, married, Dasrat Maharaj, married, <laughs> so many people married, my god, Lord Shiva is married, Lord Vishnu is married, Lord Brahma is married, okay, almost everybody is married, there are also celibates, but this conception that you cannot be spiritual if you are married is totally false, yes, Prithu Maharaj is also married, Bharat Maharaj, married. Who else? So many people, my God. I can keep going on telling names. And there are 12 Mahajans, as we know. And among the 12, majority are married. Yes, seven of them are married. And the remaining five are celibates. They are sannyasis. So, that means this video, How to be a Yogi in a City, perfectly false right. Because it means that the scriptures tell that we can be like a yogi when we are staying in the city we do not have to stay in the forest so that dispels all the darkness which people have regarding to uh, marriage or how to stay yes because the main point is what is going on internally of course externals also impact the internals yes it 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 cannot happen that whatever is happening externally is not affecting you internally that cannot happen so Let's talk with examples. So suppose a yogi is <laughs> a yogi is going out and he uh, suppose he's married. Yes, oh, no, no, he's not married. Suppose he's about to get married. Yes, we will talk of lady yogis also. <laughs> I don't know what they will be yogi needs. Maybe yes. Let's talk of men first. Yes, then let's talk of women. So suppose there's a 
this a man yogi yes he's walking some suppose somewhere he's uh, let's talk of a beautiful city maybe like mumbai yes he's going that what's what do you call that marine drive yes he's driving with his car mm. <laughs> and he's uh, his mother has told him that oh we are seeing proposals for you to get to get you married yes and then he's also having the photos of those girls whose proposals have come and the yogi is working in a big mnc yes like one of my friend is working in a company in mumbai it's a bank actually it's known as yes bank so suppose he's also working in yes bank <laughs> yes and then that yogi so called yogi or whoever you want to call him then that person sees when he goes near that necklace which is there in mumbai necklace <laughs> and then he sees there oh there are too many couples sitting there yes they are hugging each other they are kissing each other they are promising each other that we will live for eternity we will live till we die yes then he hears all those things yes now he is also about to get married <laughs> so then what happens when the yogi sees the yogi sees but the yogi doesn't see he sees through the eye of the scriptures which is known as shastra chakshu which means that shastra chakshu is like the glass okay it's like something comes inside and then it gets filtered through the glass and then it reaches you it reaches your consciousness which means you do not actually see what is happening you see what the scriptures say regarding that incident which has which is happening in front of your eyes yes which means for example suppose the yogi will see that oh there is a man and a woman married or they are boyfriend girlfriend <laughs> whichever it, way it is and how does it matter anyway so then he uh, hears all this yes promises of the heavens yes we will be happy all the time then he immediately remembers the verses from the shrimad bhagavatam should i quote them <laughs> enough of quoting shlokas let's talk of the story now so he sees these couples yes or he goes to uh, bandra bed stand in mumbai and then he sees so many couples and then he understands that now temporarily they are together they are promising for the life for eternity sat janmo ka pyar but he understands internally all everything all of these things will fade off one day she will not be there he will also not be there yes none of them will be there neither will the yogi himself exist so the yogi understands that what he is seeing there the interaction between that man and that woman is actually not because they are actually feeling like that it is because they are misidentifying themselves with the body yes which means that they the man is thinking oh i am this body the woman is thinking oh i am this body yes that is why they are thinking oh i am attracted to him oh i am attracted to her yes so the yogi understands that they are nothing but simply a product of illusion which the illusory energy has uh, uh, acted through which i mean through which the illusory energy acts upon them yes upon the humans so then he understands that this is not going to last so whenever he uh, sees a couple together he doesn't get bewildered he doesn't get agitated his mind doesn't say oh look that man is having such a beautiful girlfriend i should also have now why why only he why not me also <laughs> he understands as pralad maharaj says in the shrimad bhagavatam kandu ye ye na kara ye vayor hi bahu dukha dukham kandu tivam manasi jam <laughs> yes even lord krishna says ye hi samsparsh jab hoga dukh yo nai evate oh my dear kunti son of kunti the uh, sensation of touch which a man and a woman feels when they touch each other that results only in misery dukh yo nai evate adyanta vanta konteya nate shuramate budha these pleasures have a beginning and an end nate shuramate budha one who is intelligent does not indulges in such pleasures yes so then the yogi moves out and maybe the yogi goes out to the taj hotel which is there in mumbai yes everybody knows hotel taj yes and then suppose he has a conference where the people are 
eating a buffet yes 100 items are there in the buffet yes there is meat there's alcohol the, all the things are there in the buffet and then the yogi is also tempted to eat something like that yes <laughs> the yogi sees so many varieties of food and then the yogi is thinking what should i do yes so then he also gets a shastra chakshu he also gets a vision yes well lord krishna says i've forgotten the shloka well lord krishna says that the yogi eats only that which he wants or which he should eat yes so he may see that everybody else is indulging in eating meat or everybody else is indulging in it, drinking wine but the yogi doesn't indulge even though he might have the desire yes because pleasure is contagious as this if you see two people are enjoying by eating or by touching each other then you also feel like doing like that but he although he may feel like that he will not do like this he will not go there and indulge yes <laughs> because he knows that now if i indulge in this later on i will have to pay because this is sins are like credit cards enjoy now and pay later <laughs> yes so the yogi understands that now for the time being these people are enjoying yes but later on they are going to suffer very badly for this yes so then the yogi goes into his hotel room yes seven star five star taj room <laughs> And then he sees a beautiful bed is there. Yes, very nice, silky, soft, cozy bed. He, he goes to sleep there. And in the night, he is enjoying this beautiful room, the five-star room which he's having in Taj Hotel in Mumbai. And then while sleeping, he's thinking, my God, death can come at any moment. <laughs> the yogi, although he's sleeping in that mattress, he's enjoying that, but internally he's always conscious. I may die at any moment. What if I don't open my eyes tomorrow? <laughs> so the yogi is very cautious in not getting attached to the things of this world. Yes, which means the yogi, although he's enjoying that uh, that soft cloth, that soft blanket which is there, internally he is singing the Narsi Marti, Namaste Narasim Haya. <laughs> Why he is doing? Every night the yogi will do that. Why? Because the yogi is cautious of the fact that tomorrow morning there may be an earthquake in the night. Yes, today night and tomorrow morning I may not open the eyes. So then what happens? That's it. End of life. <laughs> so the yogi is always conscious of death in a good way. Not that he is fearful. Oh my God, I will die one day. No, no not like that. He is having a healthy attitude towards death yes which means that he knows internally that one day death will come and immediately when he thinks of death he remembers that shloka antakale narayana smriti yes where in the, it is said in the scriptures that at the end of your life whatever state you remember yes antakale chamame vasmaran muktva kalevaram hetu nanena kaunteya that shloka is there which uh, where, where lord krishna says that anta kale cha mameva which means whatever state of being you remember at the end of your life that state you shall attain without fail o son of kunti <laughs> he's telling to arjuna so that means the yogi understands if i'm sleeping in this beautiful mattress yes and then i am thinking Oh, maybe there would be a beautiful woman in this mattress. I would be enjoying with her. Or maybe some film star or some cinema star. Or maybe some woman who he fantasizes in his workplace. And then he imagines that he is enjoying with this lady in this bed. And then suppose death comes. Then he dies. Then he will be thinking of this woman. So he refrains from cultivating any such sinful desires. Which will not give him happiness in the long run. Yes. The yogi is very cautious in cultivating the right desires <coughs> and in the night he has this 72 inch display monitor inside the taj hotel right so then what happens this yogi doesn't see game of thrones there oh then what does he see oh he opens astha tv and he sees something <laughs> or maybe he links it with his mobile and in youtube he goes and searches exotic astrology how to be a yogi in a city <laughs> 
<laughs> and then he will end up watching such videos the yogi is very cautious of not to put garbage inside should i repeat the yogi is very cautious not to put put garbage inside which means that the gigo principle acts what is gigo garbage in garbage out yes so if you are giving garbage to your senses inside then what you do externally will also be filled with garbage yes so the yogi is very cautious he knows about the gigo principle and therefore he is very cautious not to indulge or not to see things which will agitate his mind and pull him towards nefarious activities because then the yogi's mind will be disturbed yes because lord krishna says brahma bhuta prasanna atma na sochati na kankshati sama sarveshu bhuteshu mad bhaktim labhate para yes so then it's morning for the yogi the yogi has got up and there's a beautiful lady there <laughs> no 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 the lady has come to offer him breakfast okay in the bed yes then this uh, the yogi is thinking wow so beautiful this lady is oh my goodness <laughs> he feels like uh, going and talking to her he feels like going and taking her phone number yes he feels like going and asking her out for a date he feels like that <laughs> but the question is does he do that yes now what happens the yogi sees the beautiful face of the lady yes and then he doesn't see to her face he rips apart her face and he rips apart all the makeup and he directly sees inside yes so he sees the beautiful face but immediately he understands oh this is all nonsense this is all makeup <laughs> he imagines how this woman would look the moment he uh, this woman would get up from the bed oh my god she would look so terrible <laughs> okay maybe maybe she might look good also but he imagines it that way yes then he understands oh she is only looking beautiful i mean she may look good but the way she is looking now is only because she is wearing this makeup yes that means the yogi is not very bewildered when he sees because he understands this human body is what basically the human body is either it's a male or a female body it's simply a combination of stool bile mucus flesh yes so that is what the human body is ultimately so the yogi is not bewildered when he sees the beautiful face of a girl or a woman or lady whatever you call because he understands this this is all these are all big blatant bunch of lies which the media is propagating yes and then this uh, lady gives her hand out handshake <laughs> then the yogi what to do should he shake hands no no he refrains he says namaste yes because he is very careful of the sense of touch and then what happens the yogi goes for breakfast and there again he is seeing oh my god there are 100 items what to eat there yes he will see people eating omelet in the morning in the breakfast because maximum time people eat omelets right in the breakfast i mean mundane people even vegetarians i have seen my god so now the yogi is thinking where is the idli sambar <laughs> where is the dosa man where is the puri sabji i cannot take omelet so suppose imagine there's a scenario where the yogi gets a bit late in taj hotel right and then the yogi goes and asks oh where is the breakfast today he says sir you are late actually <coughs> the breakfast is almost over the only thing we have for you is scrambled eggs yes so what to do we don't have anything else the only thing we have is scrambled eggs so if you want to eat you eat it or else we are sorry you have to go to the restaurant and eat yes because generally buffets are complimentary the morning uh, <coughs> breakfast in general i have seen so then he is thinking what to do should i go to the restaurant and eat or should i eat scrambled eggs here or the omelet or uh, the yolk or whatever you call it yes 
and then he's thinking oh but i will lose money if i go to the restaurant and eat but the yogi understands that i have two options either i fast or i go to the restaurant but i do not have the third option of eating this yes then the yogi goes to the restaurant and he orders a big plate of chole bhatura <laughs> and the yogi is very happily enjoying chole bhatura is enjoying that he is in delight how many bhaturas does he take he doesn't take 7 8 he takes only 3 because he knows that anyways it's 9 o'clock now and at 2 o'clock i am anyways going to have my lunch so let's eat only that much which is required yes so then what happens the yogi comes down to the reception and the person the in charge of his company says oh sir we have a mercedes for you we will tour the beautiful city of mumbai today yes and the yogi is thinking my god <laughs> we will see mumbai today and then the yogi gets up in the mercedes but before getting up in this in, in the mercedes he has a he has a look at the mercedes and then the mercedes looks to be very dark sleeky black and the moment he sees the mercedes he remembers the shloka bhuktaram yagya tapasam sarva loka maheshwaram suridam sarva bhutana gyatva mam shantim ruchati the lord krishna says to arjun that i am the enjoyer proprietor and controller and the most well wishing friend of every living entity so when he touches the mercedes he understands that this car is not mine this is this car is a property of god and it is by god's grace that he has allowed me to sit in this mercedes yes which means i am not supposed to enjoy this now what do you do you don't sit there no the yogi sits there and he feels very happy but he doesn't get attached because he knows this is anyways not mine <laughs> this is god's property this is lord krishna's property so i will not get attached to it yes and then the yogi comes out the person says oh we will have a trip in the marine drive bandra worldly ceiling yes so we will visit that necklace again and then the yogi goes and he sees the beautiful sea the oceans the sound the sound of the uh, that wind as this in a vayu that is reverberating in that place what does he think when he sees when he hears the sound he sees there's this vast river the vast ocean the vast sea this vast landmark this water body which is there and in that he sees there are different people who are going on what do you say now that you're going on with that small boat i don't know what you call that rafting or skate i mean whatever it is skating is in that ice i guess so he sees many uh, ships of millionaires billionaires and trillionaires what you call that yacht or something like that so the moment he sees these people enjoying in the uh, sea what does he think he thinks oh my god i should have also been there <laughs> he doesn't think like that the moment he sees all these people enjoying in the sea he immediately remembers there's a photo which i had once upon a time in this room yes it was a photo of a person who is drowning in the sea and then that person is been carried out by lord vishnu himself yes so that photo basically depicts that we are suffering in this material ocean yes material existence as they say bhava sagar and then lord vishnu is coming in taking us up yes he is coming and catching us and he pulls us out of this ocean so then the moment the yogi sees the people enjoying in the seas he remembers that shloka which shloka i don't know <laughs> he remembers that photo which he had seen maybe one year back when he had visited vindavan <laughs> and then what happens the yogi understands Oh god my situation is also like that please come and pick me up from here also yes because uh, i am also suffering in this material existence yes if you don't protect me who will protect me nobody can save me you are the only savior that i have and then 
he also prays to god i am in this arabian sea yes it's so vast it's unlimited and i am not able to protect myself i am falling prey to wrong things every day what will happen to me <laughs> and then the driver asks the yogi okay so where do we want to have your lunch today he says take me to the jain restaurant <laughs> or take me to the vegetarian restaurant we will go and have some great food there yes and then they will come back to kolaba maybe they will have some coffee there yes in mumbai and then they will go back and in the evening his mother calls and then his mother asks him okay so how's mumbai and what about the girls <laughs> whose photos i had sent you who, who who was the one that you liked yes who who do you think will be good and then he's like oh my god i didn't see them yet now let me see so then he opens his mobile where his mother had sent him the pictures of 10 ladies beautiful ladies in whatsapp maybe or facebook messenger <laughs> and then what happens he sees each one of those 10 beautiful ladies but to him all of them appear the same so he says i don't know what to do but i want to see what their lifestyle is yes and then he tells to his mother that it is not going to happen like this i will not go on the basis of what is appearing because photo is what photo is basically illusion yes what you see in the photo is the best version of themselves they don't look like that in reality yes so he understands these are all false blatant lies which are there in the photos the girls will never look like what they look in the photo girls or boys whatever you call them so he says go and ask them what do they do in their life what are they doing in their leisure time are they watching game of thrones yes or they watching big boss because if a man is watching big boss yes man or a woman whoever that person is then what that person will do the moment he comes home he will also start oh he got promotion she got promotion oh you know that's happening there basically what's happening is the person has so much time and the person is so frustrated that he is so bored that he has nothing to talk about his himself so he is talking always about others yes what is happening in others lives he's a bored and a totally headless and a frustrated person basically one who is talking of Uh, big boss yes they are making money out of you and you are just obeying them like a fool and then what happens the yogi goes and tells his mother that oh i uh, i am interested in their lives i am not interested in how they look <laughs> and then his mother says okay then tomorrow i will start inquiring about the lives of all these 10 beautiful ladies yes we will see what habits they have in their life what are the things that they do in the getting up in the morning are they only uh, are they only busy in uh, faking uh, things in instagram yes applying 20 30 filters and proving to everybody how great they look or how amazing their lives are yes or are they sometimes reading the scriptures also <laughs> so the yogi's criteria are very clear yes the yogi is not ready to compromise on anything okay and then the yogi comes to taj hotel in the night and then the same schedule he again chants namaste narasimhaya and he sleeps <laughs> so yes this was the story of the yogi who had entered taj hotel yes mumbai how to be a yogi inside the taj hotel in mumbai Oh my god I said we will talk about the yogini also yes the female yogi yes 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 that is in the next video <laughs> let me see if i can find some girl to come and talk regarding that oh my god i don't know any girl here okay so i only have to do the job it's a bit difficult i will try to pretend maybe i will wear a sari and come <laughs> okay until next time if you are new to the channel and you have not yet subscribed then please subscribe to it and if you want a consultation then please approach me through my website the link is there in the description below there we can also discuss how to be a yogi in bangalore or in gotting in germany okay until next time wish you good luck bye bye